All right, so you guys requested it, and uh, you know we aim to please. So buckle up because we're diving into the Abercrombie and Fitch scandal. Yeah. Um, we've got some pretty intense investigative reports to dig into this time. Articles from Rolling Stone, ABC News, and uh, there's a really deep dive from the BBC. This one, this one gets dark. It's really a stark contrast. The guy who built an empire on the image of desirability, Mike Jeffries, faces accusations of, well, exploiting that very desire. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the CEO who made Abercrombie and Fitch synonymous with youth attractiveness, exclusivity, the whole package, and now he's facing some very serious charges. It's trafficking. Yeah, and, and talk about a plot twist. This is the guy who put shirtless models in every storefront, right? And created cologne that practically bottled teenage dreams. And now we're uncovering these allegations of abuse. It's almost too much irony to handle. It really is. Yeah. And to understand how we got here, we have to go back to Jeffrey's takeover of Abercrombie and Fitch back in 1992. He totally transformed the brand, creating this aura of exclusivity aspiration. And let's be honest, a whole lot of sex appeal. And it worked for a while, but it also drew a ton of criticism for that very reason. Okay, so we've got the stage set. We've got a brand that's built on image. But there are whispers of something darker underneath. What was the turning point that really brought all of this to light? Well, a bombshell BBC investigation was published just last year, and they spoke with over a dozen men who claimed they were invited to or helped to organize events where allegedly things got very inappropriate. Mm. And the alleged hosts, none other than Jeffries and his partner, Matthew Smith. Hold on. So we're not talking about questionable marketing campaigns anymore. This is allegedly crossing a very serious line. Yeah. Yes. Incredibly serious accusations. And the investigation doesn't just scratch the surface. They've got some pretty disturbing firsthand accounts. For example, one aspiring model named David Bradbury shared his experience. He claimed he was pressured into performing a sex act with a man named James Jacobson, who was supposedly a middleman for Jeffries, promising Bradbury a chance to model for ANF if he went along with it. Wow, using the promise of a modeling career to manipulate someone like that? That's just awful. Exactly. And it points to a much larger pattern of alleged behavior. This wasn't just an isolated incident. The accusations suggest there was a system in place. So it wasn't just Jeffries and Smith themselves, allegedly. Right. They allegedly had a network of people involved in recruiting and exploiting these aspiring models. That's the picture the investigation paints. And Jacobson's role seems to have been pretty central. He was traveling around, often scouting for attractive young men, all under the pretense of finding talent for Abercrombie and these quote unquote tryouts. That's where things allegedly took a dark turn. Wait, tryouts? Like for a modeling gig, what were these guys expected to do during these tryouts? The allegations claim that Jacobson would require these aspiring models to engage in sex acts with him as part of the tryout process. Oh, that's just sickening. Exploiting people's dreams like that, it's predatory and it's awful. It really is. And remember, these were young men hoping to break into the modeling industry. Vulnerable, eager to please, and likely terrified to speak up for fear of destroying their careers. So it's not just about the individual acts, it's the alleged system of coercion and manipulation. These aspiring models were allegedly led to believe that this was the price of entry, the path to success in the industry. You're getting it. It's about power and control, leveraging that desperation to get ahead. And this alleged system thrived on keeping these young men quiet and compliant. So where does Abercrombie and Fitch, the company, fit into all of this? Were they aware of any of this alleged behavior? Well, that's a million dollar question, isn't it? The recent arrest of Jeffrey Smith and Jacobson on sex trafficking charges definitely puts Abercrombie in a difficult position. They've issued statements expressing their appallment and disgust. They've hired a private law firm to investigate, and they're trying to distance themselves from Jeffries in the civil lawsuit filed by the alleged victims. But then there's that whole thing about Jeffries demanding that Abercrombie foot the bill for his legal defense. That doesn't exactly scream, we're distancing ourselves, does it? You've hit on a major point of contention. Jeffries argues that these accusations stem from his time as CEO. Therefore, Abercrombie should be responsible. It creates this legal quagmire for the company because they're potentially liable in both the criminal case and the civil lawsuit. Okay, so we've got this tangled web of disturbing allegations. Arrests. And Abercrombie and Fitch is caught in the middle of a legal mess. But this feels much bigger than just one brand, doesn't it? It absolutely does. This story forces us to confront the dark side of industries that are built on image aspiration. And yes, exploitation. It raises some uncomfortable questions about the power dynamics that exist, not just in fashion, but in any field where people are striving for a breakthrough. That's a chilling thought. I mean, we've all felt that pressure to succeed, that drive to get ahead. It makes you wonder how common these situations really are. 
And that's what we're going to unpack in this deep dive. We're going to look beyond the headlines. We're going to connect this story to your own experiences and explore what we can all do to be more aware and make more informed choices as consumers. What's particularly disturbing about these allegations is the level of manipulation involved. I mean, we're not just talking about invitations to parties. Mm -hmm. You know, these aspiring models were allegedly led to believe that their careers depended on going along with these demands. It's like that whole casting couch trope. Yeah. But even more insidious, like they were allegedly told that these tryouts were the key to success and then bam, hit with these horrific demands. Exactly. It creates this incredibly toxic environment where people are pressured to do things that they're uncomfortable with, all under the guise of making it. And let's not forget about the immense power imbalance that's at play here. It's the CEO of a major fashion brand, a man with wealth and influence, allegedly preying on young men who are desperate for a break. You mentioned vulnerability earlier. And it's just heartbreaking. Absolutely. That power differential is key in understanding how this alleged system could operate for so long. It makes speaking out incredibly difficult. Imagine being a young, aspiring model facing that kind of pressure. Retaliation could mean the end of your dreams. The BBC report mentions that some of these men were offered envelopes of cash, sometimes thousands of dollars, almost like they were being bought and silenced at the same time. Yes, that's a tactic we see often in these types of cases. It creates a sense of obligation. It discourages victims from coming forward, and it makes it harder to prove coercion. And it wasn't just money. The report also talked about how Jeffries and Smith allegedly made these guys sign non-disclosure agreements, NDAs. You know, like how celebrities use those to keep scandals quiet. It's the same idea, but in this context, it allegedly becomes a tool to silence victims and shield the perpetrators. Just another layer of control in this alleged system. It's chilling how calculated and disturbing this all seems. It really makes you wonder how this could go on for so long yeah. without anyone speaking out. Well, it's important to consider the context. These alleged events took place roughly between 2009 and 2015. This was before the hashtag MeToo movement gained momentum, before there was widespread awareness about this type of abuse. That's a good point. Back then, the stigma surrounding male victims of sexual abuse was even stronger, making it that much harder for them to come forward. Absolutely. Plus, there's the inherent culture of silence that often surrounds powerful people. There's a tendency to protect those at the top, even when they're engaging in harmful behavior. So we've got this perfect storm of factors here. The power dynamics, the money, the NDAs, the fear of retaliation, and a society that wasn't really ready to listen. No wonder that was so long for these allegations to surface. It really highlights the courage it takes for victims to come forward, especially when the alleged perpetrators are wealthy and connected. The BBC article quotes one of the alleged victims, Barrett Paul, who claimed Jesse's groped him. He said, this experience, I think it broke me. It's heartbreaking to read. It really is. These experiences can have such a devastating and lasting impact. The trauma can affect their relationships, their self-esteem, their entire sense of self. And it's not just the direct victims who are affected, their families, their friends, everyone in their circle feels the impact of this kind of abuse. The ripple effect is huge. Okay, so we've talked about this alleged system of exploitation, the factors that allowed it to continue, and the impact on the victims. But what about Abercrombie's response? Have they done enough to address this situation and prevent future abuse? They said they were appalled and disgusted, but actions speak louder than words. That's the key question. They've hired a private law firm to investigate, which is a start. But there are still so many questions about their potential culpability. Were they aware of these alleged activities? Did they turn a blind eye? Did they in any way enable this alleged behavior? And let's not forget about Jeffries demanding they cover his legal fees. That doesn't exactly scream, we're taking full responsibility and making a clean break, does it? It definitely muddies the waters. It raises questions about how committed they really are to separating themselves from Jeffries and taking accountability. This feels bigger than just Abercrombie and Fitch, though, right? Mm -hmm. What are the wider implications for other companies, other industries? How do we make sure this doesn't happen again? You're absolutely right. This case exposes issues that extend far beyond one brand. It forces us to think about corporate culture, accountability, uh -huh. and the responsibility companies have to protect everyone they work with. So it's not just about punishing the wrongdoers. It's about creating a culture where this kind of abuse can't take root in the first place. But how do we get there? It's a multifaceted challenge. Companies need to create a culture of respect and accountability from the top down. They need clear policies that protect employees and contractors from harassment and exploitation that it can't stop there. Right. Having a policy tucked away in a handbook doesn't 
mean much if it's not enforced. Yeah. There has to be follow through. Exactly. They need to take all allegations seriously, investigate thoroughly, and hold perpetrators accountable for their actions, no matter how powerful or influential they may be. And just as importantly, companies need to create an environment where people feel safe coming forward. It can't be a speak up and risk your career situation. Absolutely. That means confidential reporting mechanisms and ensuring victims are protected from any form of retaliation. This needs to be a top-down cultural shift. So it's a combination of things. Clear policies, strong enforcement, a culture of accountability, and a safe space for reporting. It sounds like a massive undertaking. It is. And it's not just the responsibility of companies. Consumers also have a role to play in holding these companies accountable. How so? What can we as individuals do to make a difference? Do we boycott brands? Do we write angry letters? Where do we even start? It starts with awareness. Educate yourself about the issues. Look into a company's practices, their supply chain, how they treat their employees. Do your values align with theirs? It's about being informed and choosing to support businesses that are doing things the right way. You know what really struck me in the BBC report was how many of these alleged victims were young men, full of dreams hoping to make it big. It makes you wonder how many other industries operate with this same dark undercurrent, where people are vulnerable to exploitation because of their ambition. You've hit on a crucial point. This isn't unique to the fashion world. Think about any industry where there's a power imbalance where people are desperate to succeed. Entertainment, sports tech, it can happen anywhere. So what can we do? How can we be more vigilant, more aware of these situations? How do we spot the red flags, not just in fashion, but everywhere? It starts with education. We need to be aware of the signs of exploitation, the red flags that indicate someone is being abused or manipulated. Like what? What are some of those warning signs we should be looking out for? Things like pressure to do things you're uncomfortable with, promises that sound too good to be true, demands for secrecy, threats of retaliation if you speak up isolation from friends and family. Those are all red flags. So we've been talking about this power exploitation and this whole dark underbelly of an industry that thrives on image. But what about us, the everyday consumers? How can we be more aware, <laughs> not just in fashion, but in you know everything we buy and support? It feels like such a massive problem. It is a huge issue, but you're right. To bring it back to the individual level, we can all make more conscious choices. Think about the brands you buy from the companies you support. Do a little digging. What can you find out about their labor practices? They're sourcing how they treat their employees. So it's not about, you know, boycotting every brand with even a hint of controversy, but more about becoming informed consumers. Exactly. It's about asking questions, being curious. Sometimes a brand's marketing is all smoke and mirrors. You know, it's about looking beyond that glossy facade. What are their stated values? Do their actions align with those values? And do they align with your values? You might be surprised by what you uncover. This whole deep dive has been pretty eye-opening to say the least. We started with Mike Jeffries, the man who built Abercrombie and Fitch into this cultural behemoth. Yeah. And we ended up exploring these really dark corners of power, image, and exploitation. And that's the thing about deep dives, isn't it? You start in one place following a thread, and you end up uncovering this whole network of interconnected issues. It's like pulling on a loose thread and suddenly realize the entire sweater is about to unravel. But in a good way, mm -hmm. you know? Like, now we're more aware of how these systems work the patterns to watch out for, the questions we should be asking. Awareness is key. Knowledge is power, as they say. And with this knowledge, we can make more informed choices. We can challenge harmful systems. And we can advocate for change. So if there's one thing our listeners take away from this whole deep dive, what would it be? I think it's this. Never stop questioning. Never stop being curious. And never underestimate your own power to make a difference. Even small actions, like choosing to support ethical companies or speaking out against injustice, can have a ripple effect. I love that small actions, big impact. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for taking this deep dive with us. It's been uh, intense, but incredibly important conversation. My pleasure. It's always fascinating to explore these complex issues with you. And to our listeners, thanks for suggesting this topic. Mm -hmm. We hope this deep dive has provided you with some valuable insights and maybe even sparked some new questions. Remember, you have the power to make a difference. Stay curious, stay informed, and keep asking those tough questions.